Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you're looking to retire early with forever passive income, you're in the right place. This podcast is the go-to destination for real estate investors, both active and passive, and multifamily apartment investors, both new, intermediate, and advanced. Now, sit back, listen, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So, hey guys, welcome back to Accelerated Real Estate Investor Josh here. And uh, when I wanted to quickly give you guys an update on 52 Lake and teach you a couple things uh, about running a CapEx team and, and, and doing rehabs on apartment buildings um, using this real world example. So, just yesterday, I was out in the field and decided to roll up my look, man, roll up my sleeves, put my work boots on. And, uh, and go out and hang out with our construction team. And, uh, you know, first of all, I, I just think it's important that as you're building a company, building culture, that you realize that nobody's more important. Uh, CEO, you know, down to the guy that's just working in property management and doing maintenance calls and makes 17 bucks an hour when you realize that you're all need each other, you're all part of an ecosystem and a business that needs each other. Uh, I think it's wildly important that even if you're in a leadership role in your company, that you go roll up your sleeves, you throw on your boots, you put on your dirty jeans and you go work on site side by side with your guys. Um, so I did that yesterday. Um, funny thing was my boots, actually, I had a pair of sorrel boots. I don't know if you're from, from sorrel. They're like, you know, kind of expensive, like $200 boots. Well, they've been sitting out in my garage for the past year and I put them on. I was wearing them for about half the day and the guys got a kick out of them because they actually were dry rotted and the bottom, the base, like the silicone waterproof base of the boot cracked off from the leather and sure enough, halfway through the day, they, they literally fell apart while they were on my feet. I had to throw my boots away because they were dry rotted because they'd been sitting in the garage, in my garage, in, in, in the closets, out in the garage. And uh, they totally fell apart while they were literally on my feet. So I was walking around for second half of the day in my socks. The guys thought it was hilarious. Anyway, we bought 52 Lake for 3 million bucks. Uh, the original plan was to put $250,000 in it in CapEx. Um, about 50,000 on the exteriors and 200,000 on the interiors. And as we're getting into the building, uh, we're definitely noticing that the opportunity to raise the rents even more is there. Okay. And we're also realizing that we have plan on putting 50,000 into the commons and the exteriors if we really want to do it right, we should probably put about 75,000 or 80,000 in the exteriors. And instead of, you know, putting 200,000 into the units, uh, we're realizing, you know, like, let's just blow this thing out. Let's add another hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars to the budget in order to really blow out the interiors of the units and make it like laid out, like butcher block. What we decided to do is actually punch some holes in the walls between the living rooms and the kitchens to open up a picture window and add like a, a, a breakfast bar in between the, uh, the living rooms and, and, and the kitchens. Now, 52 Lake is in the Gold Coast of Cleveland. Uh, this is really nice. It's right by the parks. It's right by Lake Erie. It's right by the lake. It's walkable. Uh, it's right by West 117th Street. You can look it up. It's called Clifton Lakes Apartments on Lake Avenue um, in Cleveland. And um, look, part of this comes down to like, where can you get the value? So I had a call with my lender. I said, look, Chris, um, we're thinking about purposely going over budget here because um, we really would like to lay out the courtyard. We'd like to do all the carpets and all the commons. We'd like to paint all the commons. We'd like to paint all the doors. We'd like to add new security doors to the front, add new security cameras to the front, add Wi-Fi to the entire building. 
we want to seal and stripe all the parking spaces in the garage. And instead of spending $250,000 on CapEx, I really think we're going to spend $450,000 on CapEx. And I went back to Chris and said, Chris, can, you know, if we, if we blow this out, if we raise the rents, can we, instead of getting a $5 million stabilized value, can we get closer to a $6 million stabilized value? And I talked to Chris and Chris, look, look, if you do everything that you're thinking about doing and you can achieve these higher rents that you think you can get, there's no question that you can get 110,000 a door, which puts the value at about 5.7 million or even $120,000 a door, which puts the value at 6.2 million. So instead of a $5 million value, we could possibly push this thing to a $6.2 million value by doing the extra interiors, the extra CapEx, the, the commons, the Wi-Fi, uh, the courtyard. And so I made that decision literally last week to purposely go over budget. Now we told our investors, look, our, our limited partners, we're going to own this building for about two years. This is probably going to push us out to maybe two and a half years, maybe even three years. Okay. Uh, but it makes sense. It makes sense to harden the asset now, raise the extra money. Okay. The extra 200, $300,000. Plus we're going to bleed a little bit of cash because we have more vacancy. We're going to bleed about 150,000 in cash. So all in, we're probably going to go over budget about $400,000. I'm okay with that. In this particular circumstance, we know that we can push this value to between 5.7 million and 6.2 million. We'll still be able to refinance, right? Look, we're going to be all in instead of 3.5 million all in, we're going to be all in for 3.9 million. Okay. At 110,000 or 112,000 a door, that puts us at 5.7 to $5.8 million of value. When we refi 75% loan to value, that new loan is going to come back in at about 4.3 million. We're still going to pay off the 3.9 million that we're all into it for. We're still going to have tax-free refi proceeds to the tune of about 400 grand tax-free. Okay. So we're pushing up the budget, but we're also pushing up the value. Okay. Now there's a limit to this. Okay, because in this area, we're not going to get much more than 120,000, maybe 125,000 a door, right? And I want to be conservative. I want to be at about 110,000 a door and know that the deal still works. Okay, it still works at 110,000 a door. And it does. So if we get 115,000 a door, 120,000 a door, 125,000 a door on the refi a year from now, two years from now, we, we're, we're, we're definitely winning. You know, we're, we're definitely to the positive there. Okay. So yesterday I was on site all day and we were, we were just, we were hustling. I was talking to the contractor. So the electricians, they're installing all new led lights. And he tells me, Hey, out of the, out of the eight hallways and commons, I'll have six of them done by the end of the day yesterday. And the other two in the B building, B2 and B3, those are going to be done today. So as of today, all the led lights in the whole building are done. The building used to look, you know, dark and dingy. Now it looks bright, LED lights everywhere, and we're saving on the electric bill. That's fantastic. Second thing is all of the common spaces are painted. Kevin, the painter, is finishing up painting all the walls, all the trim, all the unit doors are being done. This beautiful blue, this very bright, vibrant blue. Kevin's wrapping all that up. Okay. It's got 95% of it done. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Then we decided to put a new commercial carpet on the main floors. 
do new treads on all the staircases and then new carpet in the landings. And that's 80% done. Okay. Right now the treads are actually on back order for two weeks. So they're going to come back two weeks from now and finish it. Okay. And yesterday, one of the things I did is I walked every unit. I looked at all of the contractor lists. We created punch lists for every unit. We walked about 22 units that are vacant that are almost done with CapEx. And we made punch lists for all that stuff. And we had uh, two of our maintenance guys there today finishing the punch lists. He'll be, they'll be there uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. And then all of those punch lists will be done and all those units will be rent ready. So not only on top of the punch list I was there, we were also placing all the appliances. Okay, stainless steel appliances as far as the, the refrigerator and the stoves. We were ripping them out of the boxes. We were throwing away the styrofoam. We were taking off all the tape, unpacking these appliances, lifting them into the units. One of the units, the doorway into the kitchen was too small. We actually had to lift the refrigerator up through the picture window that we just cut out of the wall between the living room and the, and, and the kitchen and then push it in. So four of us lifting up the refrigerator, lifting it in and dropping it into the unit. Um, one of the stoves, we took it, we opened it up out of the box and the stove was damaged. It had a huge dent in it. So we had to return that, order a new one. That's going to be um, coming next week. So we're so close now with all of this that we decided to put together a leasing event next Saturday. So I love deadlines in business. And I think this is one of the takeaways. When you put your flag in the ground and say, this is a deadline, okay? We need this stuff done and we're having a leasing event next Saturday. Okay, so today's January 7th. Next Saturday is January 15th. Okay. And we're going to have a leasing event. Well, guess what? And now by next Thursday, okay, the LED lights are already done. That's great. But the security cameras I discussed, they better be in. The front doors that we're repainting, that better be done. The treads to the staircases, the front of each staircase needs painted, that better be done. Okay. The final punch lists of the units, it's got to be done. Okay. The mopping of the second, third, and fourth floor, which are hardwood floors in the hallways, that's got to get done. Okay. The painting of all of the doors, uh, the, 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 we're painting all the unit doors, this bright, bright vibrant blue, that's got to get done. Okay. The appliances, the, the three or four appliances that were damaged or we were shorted on, that's got to be delivered and installed. Uh, the, there's three tubs that need to get glazed and tile that needs to get glazed. That's got to get finished. Okay, so we're going to go there Monday. We'll have the weekend. Monday, we're going to go check and make sure that all of this is, is, is rolling and that everybody understands that Thursday is the deadline. And then Thursday morning, we're scheduled to go back and have an owner walk through, the owner being me, walking back through the building with Dave, my VP of construction, and making sure that all of this is completed because we're going to have a big turnout with this leasing event next Saturday. And we're going to have all these units. And I'm, I'm hell bent on making sure that these 20 vacancies that have all been hard turned, that those are all leased and filled and rents and, and leases are signed by the end of March. Okay. So we've upgraded to a premium subscription of apartments.com. It's going to cost us about 600 bucks a month for the next six months. Um, we're investing in, in, in uh, swoop flags and signs out front. Uh, we're doing a bunch of Facebook marketplace advertising. It's a great place to find residents for your deals. It's Facebook marketplace. It's free. Uh, we've also syndicated through apartments.com. All of our new photos, all of our new pictures, all of our new pricing because apartments.com controls about a dozen other websites. Um, and we also are, um, now check this out, the Wi-Fi. We wired the entire building. You know, Wi-Fi and internet connectivity are two different things. Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. It's, it's in the air, right? It's wireless internet. Then we also have the internet hardline connectivity into each of the units, Okay. So we basically told people if they sign leases before the end of March, that they will then get free Wi-Fi, which is a $75 value per month, Wi-Fi and internet connectivity until they renew their lease next year. Okay. So 
the internet is being installed. The Wi-Fi is being installed. We got a couple of things that are on back order. They're, they're, they're called these aggregate devices. The internet comes in to the building. The aggregate device then splits out the Wi-Fi from the internet connectivity. Anyway, it's, you know, it's, it's Wi-Fi geek speak. Don't worry about it. But we got to have those installed. Those are about on back order. Those are coming next month. So we told people, look, once the Wi-Fi is installed, you get free Wi-Fi until your renewal. And then at the renewal, your rent's going to go up. 75 bucks for the Wi-Fi, and we're going to bump their base rent as well next year. Okay, so the Wi-Fi is essentially going to be free for about a year. And so now we're expecting that by April 1, this building is turned, it's hardened, it's cash flow positive, it is fully leased up. The stairs are done, the treads are done, the lighting is done, the security camera is done, the Wi-Fi is done, the courtyard is done. The building's hardened, and we're basically at pro forma a year in advance. Okay, we bought this building last May. It's, it hasn't even been a year. And we got a slow start, okay, uh, in, in turning units. Now, once this is done, we'll be, again, $400,000 over budget between the CapEx budget plus the cash bleed. But once these units are leased, we will be damn near at pro forma a year in advance. And then we'll see what happens with the other roughly 25 units in the building. We may need to hold the asset for an extra year as we just organically raise rents on the other, the other units. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just be able to bump those rents because of all the amenities that we've added. Okay, the lighting, the carpet, the courtyard. Okay, new signage out front covered parking in the garage. I am, I, I, I can tell you that back in September, I felt like we were starting to fall behind. Here we are, January 7th, 2022. And we are now going to be way ahead of schedule. Okay. So what did we learn? First of all, look, sometimes you got to go over budget as long as you understand where you're making the investments, how it's going to impact the rent, how the rent impacts the value. And if you could still refinance or sell to get out, okay, to get your investors out, all right? It's okay to go over budget as long as it fits within a new business plan, okay? Number two, I'm going to tell you lighting, lighting, lighting. The LED lighting in this building makes all the difference. Install LED lighting everywhere you go, okay? Number three, make sure as a leader in your organization, you roll up your sleeves, you put on your boots, even if your boots fall apart, like mine did get on site, work side by side with your guys. I was asking them questions about construction. I felt like a total moron because I'm the CEO, but look, construction's not in my swim lane. So I'm asking them questions about, Hey, Dave, what's the difference between shoe mold and quarter round? You know, Dave, show me how to install this new P trap. You know, like the flange in the toilet. What is that? How does that work? All right. Like, I want them to know that I care. By asking questions, it shows that you care. I care. I ask questions. Um, look, I, I'm, in, I'm involved. I want to know. And I want to create relationship, connectivity with my team. The more connected they are to me, the more they feel like I'm a man, I'm a regular guy, I'm a person and I care about them, and they care about me, then I can ask them, hey, if they're into the Indians, they're into the Browns, they're into, you know, the Steelers, Barf. Um, we could talk about things like that. They can laugh about my boots. That'll be a memory. They'll be thinking about that a year from now. We'll be laughing about it. Okay, they'll be talking about it when the CEO showed up and had to climb over one of the uh, refrigerators to get into one of the units because the refrigerator was stuck in the doorway. Yeah, that happened yesterday. Okay, these kind of things they'll remember. And it creates relationship. You see, as a CEO in your business, you can't expect everybody to care like you care. Or you can't expect everybody to, you know, hustle like you hustle or work extra hours like you do. It's bullshit to think that the CEO is going to expect all the employees who have different goals and different objectives to care as much as you do. They're not. Okay, don't expect that from them. 
But what you should expect is that if you do want them to work hard and you want to have a great culture, you got to go side by side with your people and build relationship, have conversations. How's your kids? Who's your favorite team? Where are you from? That matters. It matters. Okay. And so yesterday was a big day because not only did we build relationships, we got an incredible amount of things done. And I was able to see with my own two eyes, all the updates on the security doors, the paint, the carpet, the, uh, the security cameras, the Wi-Fi, all the unit turns. Okay. I'm not relying on somebody else to asset manage my building. Go asset manage your building, build relationships, build a great business, and you'll go from being behind schedule to being ahead of schedule. Hey, Josh here. And do you want to win a free Accelerated Investor t-shirt? All you have to do is give Accelerated Investor, our podcast, Accelerated Investor, a rating and a review on iTunes. Okay, do that now. Then send us a screenshot on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. What we're going to do then is every week we're going to pick our favorite rating and review and we're going to send that person a free t-shirt and maybe again some other cool fun stuff as well from Accelerated Investors. So again, don't forget to take a screenshot, leave a rating, review, take a screenshot, send it to us so we know exactly who you are and then once a week, every week on the podcast, we will announce a new winner. Don't forget to take a screenshot and send it to us so we know exactly who you are. We'll announce a new winner every week. You were just listening to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. If you enjoyed this episode and learned something new, help us build the AI community by leaving a review and five-star rating on our iTunes podcast channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another episode. To see passive investing opportunities, visit freelandventures.com slash passive. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of with multifamily apartments, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching with Josh at www.joshcantwellcoaching.com. <laughs>